This weekend, 10 skipjacks, including the Rosie Parks, expected to compete in the 2014 Chop Tank Heritage Skipjack Race in Dorchester County. You probably remember how we followed the restoration of the Rosie Parks. The century-old vessel sat on land for decades. But after a two-year restoration project, she was once again back in the water where she belongs. The restoration of skipjacks, such as the Rosie Parks, are vitally important. Yeah, once numbered in the hundreds, today there are only 20 working skipjacks in existence. That's important because they are the only commercial oyster harvesters that are powered only by wind. And soon we'll be able to count another skipjack in the working fleet. The Catherine is in the process of a multi-year restoration project, a project that is not only restoring a boat, but restoring lives. There's something majestic and beautiful about the way the skipjacks grace the eastern shore waters on a breezy day. Maybe because each vessel has a history, a story that no one wants to end. That's why Stony Whitelock is doing all he can to add chapters to Catherine's story. I was raised here, born and raised here all my life, and uh, skipjack was all my family's uh, business. And uh, I got off the water as a young man. But keeping her afloat was challenging. Built in 1901, she was already more than 100 years old. Wooden boats are made to last about 50 years. And uh, this was rebuilt in 1954. I think it was four or five when I bought it, uh, 04, 05. And uh, so that was in the 60 year range it had been uh, since it had been rebuilt. So Stoney enlisted the help of Mike Vlahovich of Coastal Heritage Alliance. Coastal Heritage Alliance is a public charity, a 501c3 nonprofit, uh, with a specific mission to help preserve and sustain the culture of the watermen. So, uh, you know, we, we only do our activities in watermen's communities. Um, when we do a historic restoration, it's always in regards to a, a waterman's boat. I'm glad uh, he was available and uh, was able to help us with this because without his expertise, none of this would have ever took place. It would have been just one more casualty. Another alliance came when Mike learned of a project that gives inmates from Eastern Correctional Institution an opportunity to work out in the community. Darrell Webster is the facility administrator. It's about getting these guys back out in the community turning things, you know, giving back to the community and making some restorative efforts to see that, uh, that they understand what it is to give back. And it's also a learning tool for them. The men are carefully selected. The project itself, or the public safety works, is, it's not easy uh, project to get on. So these guys are screened very closely. They know that. So they know they have to be in line with what it is that we're looking for to even get on the project. There's a waiting list of guys. So they don't do, they pretty much stay out of trouble. Once they get on the project, they stay out of trouble. And basically, these guys are gonna work all day. They're gonna go back, they're gonna get a shower. They're probably gonna sit up for a little bit and they're gonna lay down and go to sleep. They're not gonna be in any correctional officer's face. They're not gonna be bothering anybody. Mike says that motivation shows in their work. Absolutely excellent positive attitudes, willing to try, always anxious to learn. Uh, I hope my regular staff doesn't hear this because um, I, <laughs> I find, you know, I find a lot more satisfaction working with the inmates than I probably would, uh, you know, employees in a way. They appear to really uh, appreciate this opportunity. And with good reason. Because of the work they're doing here, they'll have a better chance of landing a good job once they're released. These guys can go to a bogeyar now when they get out and uh, say, hey, I've done this. I've helped restore a wooden vessel. I know how to do this, and uh, they can make a living. The work is not easy. Most most of the work we do, um, I mean, it's very physical. Um, it's, it's it's heavy work. It's uncomfortable. It can be physically uncomfortable working on the bottom of the boat where you're driving, you know, five and six inch long spikes overhead. Um, so drilling holes and understanding the right size drills to use and the right tool to use. Uh, even the technique of swinging a big sledgehammer overhead. I mean, there's really something to learn. 
But in the end, it won't be just about getting an antique back in the water, but contributing to a community that needs it most. I don't think there's any other, uh, what I would call a cultural marker, any, any other piece of um, uh, material culture uh, that is as important uh, to this community um, than, than the skipjack. Uh, and what, what I really like about um, the Deal Island Chance community and the skipjack is that in all cases these are still working vessels. Okay? They're, not, they're not just here to display although certainly people do come and view them and learn and appreciate them, but um, I mean, this is helping people make a living. Making the Catherine a restoration project that also goes a long way in creating restorative justice. And Stoney says he hopes to have Catherine back in the water by next spring. Wow, it's not just a boat. No. I love when you do those, thank you. Another treasure on Delmarva, the many farmers markets. And today, we're visiting one that's open year round. Delmarva Life Sean Stryker is gonna take us there to show us all they have to offer. And then once we have all of our fresh produce, Disney star Laura Murano drops in to give us a few ideas on what we can do with it. See how she's helping to make veggies fun and delicious. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back.